All right, welcome back, everyone. And this is the alternate opening from my book, The Forgotten Sands, which Forgotten Sands, which I ultimately deleted after just feeling it wasn't original enough. So uh, this is the alternate deleted opening, but I still had fun uh, writing it, so I'm going to include it. All right, uh, chapter one, alternate. It was close to midnight when the explorer entered the bar. It had a smoky atmosphere, and the few gathered there looked at him suspiciously. He ignored them and made his way to a table in the corner where a shadowy man sat. Ryan Cross, welcome back, the man in the suit said emotionlessly. Ryan took a seat across from him. I assume you have it? Ryan reached into his jacket and put an object wrapped in silk on the table. The man leaned forward, revealing the face of an Indian businessman who couldn't conceal his eagerness. Ryan gently set his hand on the cloth. Payment first. The businessman scowled. You think me dishonest? I've made a few bad calls over the years. They tend to get expensive. Still scowling, the businessman nodded to a man behind Cross, who set a briefcase on the table. A moment later, it was opened, revealing stacks of dollar bills, all neatly arranged. Ryan released the cloth, which the businessman eagerly grasped. He gently removed the cloth, revealing a stunning diamond, the size of a baseball. The Maharaja's diamond, he breathed in awe. Lost after the British invaded India, now finally restored. He turned it over, admiring it with a greedy eye. Ryan was busy checking over his money. Everything appeared to be in order. Fifty thousand dollars. I must commend you, Mr. Cross. Your work exceeds all expectations. All in a day's work, he replied. This has been lost to my people for generations. Tell me, how did you find it? Ryan shrugged. I just knew where to look which was as close to the truth as he could get. Since the deal had been struck, Ryan had lit out for India. He didn't have much to go off of, but he did know one thing. A diamond that spectacular didn't just go missing. It would have been stowed away when the British invaded. He had spent several weeks of hard research pinpointing the last known location. He had finally found the diamond in an abandoned palace 50 miles away from Delhi. The businessman finished admiring it and reverently stowed it away. A pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Cross, he struck his hand out. At that moment, one of his security guards pulled a gun out, aiming it at the businessman. What are you doing? The businessman couldn't hide his shock. The diamond handed over. This is an outrage. One last chance. Hand it over. The businessman gra grasped it defiantly. This belongs to India, not to men like you, he spat defiantly. Very well, and the guard fired one, two, three shots. Ryan at that moment used his foot to propel him away from the table. The guard whirled around and began firing at him. Ryan ran over to the bar top and leapt over it, using it for cover. He, he heard the shooter reloading. He quickly looked around for anything that could be used as a weapon. The shooter began approaching. Ryan then spot on an empty bottle of whiskey and grabbed it. He gripped it as tightly as he could until the shooter grew closer. Ryan then jumped up, grabbed the shooter by the shoulder, and slammed the bottle onto his head. The shooter yelled in pain as glass and blood trickled from his head. Ryan ran past him and scooped up the diamond lying on the floor. He had just stowed it safely in his jacket when he received a sharp blow to his head. Knocked on the ground, he briefly saw stars before picking himself up and came face to face with a man nearly twice his height. Ryan looked straight up at him. You are a big man, he commented. The man simply sneered and then aimed another punch at Ryan but this time he was ready for it. He sidestepped and then punched the man in the jaw. He might as well have hit a brick wall. Ryan yelled in pain as the man merely smiled. Would you like to try again? The man then rushed Ryan as they both crashed into the bathroom. Ryan quickly rolled out of the way and then stood up. The big man was also ready. He attempted a wild haymaker, which Ryan avoided. Ryan then counterattacked, aiming a solid kick to the man's knees. The big man doubled over which Ryan used the opportunity to grab him by the head and rammed it into the toilet. He did it again and again, knocking off ch chunks of porcelain. It wasn't until the fifth time the big man finally collapsed. Ryan was panting, exhausted from the effort. It smells in here, he muttered. Should suit you just fine. He walked out and didn't see any more attackers. The diamond was still safe with him. The suitcase with money was gone, however. Just my luck, he thought. In the distance, he heard police sirens. He decided it would be a good idea to leave. He walked out into the cold night air. 
off on his next adventure. And that was the end of the alternate opening, which I ultimately cut for a lot of reasons.